For the last couple of months, I've been working on a Laravel website, which is something that I wanted to build for myself personally. And as a 10 year WordPress veteran, I learned a lot and really Laravel will stay in my back pocket. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three major reasons why I think Laravel might be a contender depending on the type of project and why I still probably will continue to use WordPress for almost everything that I do despite having loved this process up till now. Now, before we get started, of course, I wanna to touch on just how absolutely mammoth WordPress is in comparison to Laravel. Even though Laravel has a pretty substantial user base, it has extensive documentation, all the AI tools are capable of writing code for Laravel. And of course, that's a large part of the reason why I was able to build the site that I'm gonna show you here in just a little bit. But if we look at this, Built With is claiming that there is 760,000 live websites in their database. Whereas with WordPress, there are 30 million live websites. So of course, WordPress is an absolute behemoth. Pretty much anything you wanna do in WordPress can be done with an off-the-shelf plugin. And there are some things that exist like that for Laravel, but for the most part, it's going to be focused on you creating your own solution. And let me demonstrate that here with my own project. Before we get back to the Laravel discussion, I wanted to make sure you know that the plugin I co-founded called Pi Calendar is available right now as an LTD. This deal is to celebrate our second birthday and it's available until the end of the month. It's going absolutely gangbusters, so make sure you grab that before the deal ends. We're not sure what the LTD looks like long-term, whether we'll offer it again, but at this point we know it's available until the end of the month and then it will go away for at least a little while. As you can see, Pi Calendar is the easiest event calendar plugin for WordPress. It has tons of awesome features like recurring events, blackout dates, and all kinds of good stuff, so visit pycalendar.com to learn more. So what I've built is a website called timetowrench.com and it's for people like me who do lots of DIY car maintenance. In my particular case, I have a bit of a car accumulation problem and so keeping track of even basic things like oil changes and tire rotations and things like that gets pretty cumbersome and you just suddenly realize you don't even know the last time that you did that. So you can obviously use a Google Sheet or something but I wanted something fancier that gives me automatic notifications based on either time or mileage. This is one of those things that turns out to be far more complex in production than it sounds like when you set out to build this. So essentially the idea is that you enter your service records for a vehicle, it sends you reminders based on, like I said, time, mileage, or both, and then of course you have a detailed service record. So in the future, you'll be able to share this and that kind of thing, and for now, it's just going to be a simple, cheap, one-time LTD price just to get some users on it. So the way that it would work as a brand new user is you would go create your account. I'm certainly no designer as you can see, but it is functional. So you would enter your information. And then what's gonna happen from here is when I click create account and continue, it's going to take me to a hosted Stripe checkout. So from here, the person just pays for their checkout and then they're redirected back to the dashboard. So let's go take a look at the dashboard itself. So once you're in the app, all you need to do is add a vehicle. We're going to just pop in a 2023 Toyota GR Corolla. Current mileage, let's just say is 56,000. And then I have a photo here I'll upload. And then there's some other fields I've configured here like VIN number, license plate, and nickname, purchase date, that kind of thing. We'll go ahead and add the vehicle. And now that we have the vehicle added, this is where the first part of why I think Laravel is just such a powerful tool in comparison to something like WordPress begins to show itself. And that is primarily the handling of relationships because Laravel uses a system called MVC, which is Model View Controller. And that's totally opposed to the way that WordPress works where almost everything is a post. There are posts, post options, you know, it kind of gets a little murky when you look at taxonomies and stuff. But really, if we look at it, almost everything is a post. With the MVC framework, you're controlling the way that the data is created and manipulated, how it's interacted with, and how it's displayed to the user on the front end. So what I would do from this point is go into this vehicle's dashboard and we can see there's no services. So I would come in and add a service. Let's just say that our vehicle now has 59,000 miles, service date was today, and we did an oil and filter change. We can go ahead and configure a reminder. And now we're in three tiers of relationships. So we have this vehicle as the first tier. Then we have the service record at the second tier. And then we have these service reminders as a third tier. So the way that this flow works is that in WordPress, you'd have to have a post that's related to this one, that's related to this one, and they all would need to maintain that relationship, but that's not possible natively in WordPress without something like advanced custom fields. Whereas this relationship behavior in Laravel is built right into the way that the framework works. So if I go ahead and save this, we can see it displayed in our little timeline here. We can go ahead and view this. This is essentially like a singular template almost in WordPress 
for this particular service record, but you can kind of see here in the URL that we're already in that sort of subsection. So we're looking at vehicle with the ID of 40 and its service record and the single view of service record ID 74. Then the system from here is going to look at these service reminders and based on the intervals, it's either gonna send a reminder in six months or 5,000 miles as this oil change is due. So you can see how this starts to get really complicated really fast. So when you wanna build something custom like this, you can see how it starts to get complicated really fast, no matter which way you do it, but a product like Laravel is more intended for something like this to be built. We're creating custom functionality, we're manipulating the data in custom ways, and something like WordPress could be built to do something like this. But trust me, I tried many times over many months with many different tools that are extremely capable and that I've, I've built 20 plus thousand dollar membership websites on and still I could not get something like this to work within the confines of WordPress without something totally bespoke. And then it's like, well, why not just use something like Laravel? Now the catch here is that with WordPress and especially the block editor, you have a very visual interface to do almost everything from the backend administration to uploading files and plugins to managing settings, anything you wanna do, there is a UI for it. You're not forced to go into the code, which you certainly can do in WordPress. However, Laravel is essentially the opposite. There is no UI, it's all done through a code editor and you have to do things like you know SSH into your server and things like that, so it can get really complicated really fast but I took that as a personal challenge to want to learn and grow my skill set and understand what is Laravel good for and how can I potentially use it in the future if a project comes up that I want to take on but WordPress might not be a good fit for. So we really have some fundamental differences between WordPress and Laravel. We have the whole idea that WordPress is posts and Laravel is the MVC framework. And then for me specifically, we have this particular setup like I showed you, where we have these like multi-tier relationships that are just built in as part of Laravel's model system, the M in MVC. Whereas in WordPress, if I wanted to do something like that, I'd have to do multi-tier relationships, one to another to another, which gets super clunky and really hard to follow really fast. Another thing is the extreme clarity that Laravel has on who it's for and what it's trying to do as opposed to WordPress. So coming to the main Laravel website, there's actually a little video right here that's really annoying and flashy. So I deleted it out of the, <laughs> the inspect tool just to make it simpler. But if you come to this, it's like build and ship software with tools crafted for productivity. It's like, okay, that tells me essentially what I need to know. That little video pops up right here, which is why it's not showing up. So then it says a PHP framework with a robust ecosystem. If you're not somebody that is comfortable with something like that, this immediately tells you this product is not for me, or you come to this and you say, damn, this product is for me. So it has these packages built in, and one of them is the login and authentication system. That's not something that I built, that login, register, forgot password, that all comes as part of a Laravel core package. And then the Stripe integration as well as part of the Laravel cashier functionality. So that's just a package you just install onto your Laravel project, and it essentially allows me to go through the whole Stripe setup process. I don't have to build any APIs or do anything crazy. I get forwarded to the checkout and back. You can, of course, host the Stripe checkout yourself and do all of that on your project, but I didn't want any part of that. I wanted to offload all of the burden and heavy lifting off to Stripe, send them to Stripe, and then they come right back. That's cool. A couple of other things here that are just, you know, very much high level and over my head. But you come down here and it's like all of this stuff actually makes sense, a little bit more sense to me now that I've messed with this. But if you don't know what this is and you come to this site, you're like, holy crap, this is not for me. Coming to the wordpress.org homepage, it says meet WordPress, open source publishing platform. I've gone through this in other videos, just the perception of what this actually is. And it's like, okay, so I can basically build just standard simple pages, got it, all right. But the reality of that is that's actually not the case. With WordPress, you can build almost anything you want. There are certainly limitations and it's going to come down to both your own capability and the tools that you're using. Eventually you're gonna hit a glass ceiling, but I think the extreme clarity of who Laravel is for and what it's trying to achieve versus WordPress is something that really has made me appreciate Laravel. Of course, my entire business and everything I do is based on WordPress, so I'm still partial to it and will continue to use it, but I thought this was a really fun experiment to build something that I am actually going to use in the real world using a totally new tool with a totally different mindset and philosophy. And now I have a really great understanding of how Laravel works, 
who it might be for, and maybe some future projects that I might be able to put on it. So with that, I built a Laravel project so you don't have to. If this is of interest, I can definitely share more about my experiences and what I would do for future projects moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Jonathan, and thank you for watching.